Hello, Danielle. Hey guys, so I got YouTube up here. I got Instagram here. I am going to be sharing recipes. Finally live with you, Lisa. Lisa says, I am not on my boat. Could you imagine if my boat looked like this? No, we rented a place, just a little life update. We rented a place here in South Florida as our boat is out of the water getting service. It's been a crazy couple, it's been a crazy year. Oh my gosh. Um, there's been some issues with the boat. We had to take it out of the water, fix those issues, add new things. So we can't stay on the boat while this is happening just because we don't have running water. We can't use the toilets. It's a total nightmare. So we rented a little cabin here in South Florida, a little cheap little thing. It's really cute. It's actually been really nice to just have the house to myself for the day as Kevin is working, AKA working on the boat. And I've just been here working on Healthful Pursuit and doing stuff. It's been a nice change of pace. The dogs are in what we like to call storage, which is just the little puppy hotel that we've used here a couple of times. They really like it. They get a yard. They get to play with their puppy friends. All is good. So today we are gonna be chatting all about keto cooking. I'm going to post this in Instagram. Keep that comment pinned. Okay, I heard, I saw some of you talk about the fact that you just got your cookbook. Awesome, I have mine right here. Um, there's always a bunch of confusion, I, I sense. This is my first book, The Keto Diet. It's different than my second book, The Keto Diet Cookbook. They kind of look similar. This was on purpose, just because like, they're meant to be kind of read this one first and then this one. This one goes through beginner content and really how to structure your ketogenic diet for you and your body. And this guy goes through meal planning, how to use food, how to plan your meals properly on keto. I got all my tabs going for today's conversation. I'm prepared this time. And a bunch of you recommended that we do a virtual event today chatting about my personal favorite recipes, why I like those recipes, why I chose the ingredients that I chose, and kind of familiarize yourselves with ingredients, food prep, and all of the things. Um, I am doing virtual book tours like this where I'm reading to you, I'm sharing recipes, you guys can ask, ask questions instead of going on tour. Um, I'm able to connect with so many more of you on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram that I'll ever be able to in person. And I've just been so busy with managing Healthful Pursuit and working on my upcoming book, Keto for Women, that comes out in June. It's just been nuts. So I just figured, why not have these virtual events every couple of days where we chat about the book while I have great internet? Um, and we've had some partners come on and give you guys coupon codes for joining live. So Perfect Keto is one of the partners for these events. You guys can go to perfectketo.com, use the coupon code COOKBOOK20 to get 20% off any of their full-size products. So if you have a Perfect Keto order that you are about to make or you're thinking about making in the next couple of weeks, use COOKBOOK20 to get 20% off all the goodies at perfectketo.com. Uh, traveling cat and her dogs. Oh, for women, definitely something I should buy. Um, yeah, you can get more details about my upcoming book at ketoforwomen.com. And as we're going through this book, you can also go to keto diet cook, uh, rather, you can go to keto dietbook.com to get a copy of this baby. It's in Target across the US, Barnes and Noble, all the bookstores. And then in Canada, it's in Costco. Um, Walmart, Indigo Chapters, basically anywhere. If you can't find this at your local bookstore, you can also go to Amazon and get it there. Or you can just ask your bookstore, like, where's Leanne's book? It looks like this. <laughs> so if you have questions while I'm going through the recipes, post them down below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. And let's get started. So today I wanted to chat with you guys about breakfasts and lunches. And so first I want to preface at the beginning of the book, I came up with about 25 recipes, like sauce recipes, because I find that on keto, we kind of like get into the zone of like eating ground beef and cabbage every day forever. And it starts to get really, really, really boring. So in the cookbook, I gave you about 20 recipes for sauces. So you could just add a new sauce to it. And then all of a sudden it's a new recipe. 
And I do really, really love things like Primal Kitchen dressing, but I've had a lot of you say that it's just too expensive. And those avocado oil based dressings are just too costly. And I also want to make sure that you guys are eating good stuff that isn't costing a lot of money. There's a question, is it available on Kindle? Yes, this book is available on Kindle. You can find it at amazon.com or .ca, both. Or I'm sure it's available all over. I'm just not up to date on all those things because authors don't really know. So just go to Amazon and, and search for Leanne Vogel and you'll find it. So I made a bunch of sauces and one of my favorites is this green speckled dressing. It's so good. I use it all the time. So I'm going to tell you what I used and why I used it. You can use um, any light tasting oil. Now I choose light tasting oils for dressing. So I taste the dressing and not just the oil because it gets really boring. Um, so I like using avocado oil or light olive oil, but you can use whatever you'd like. I do call for mayonnaise. Now you can use whatever you like. I enjoy using avocado oil mayo, but you can also make your own mayonnaise and I've included a recipe in here. And there's also one, oh, this book is so heavy, in the keto diet. Um, then apple cider vinegar, dried chives, coconut aminos. You can also use soy sauce. Dijon mustard, dried parsley, distilled vinegar. Now, if you're sensitive to corn, you can just replace it with more um, um, apple cider vinegar. Uh, garlic powder, tarragon leaves, and sea salt. That's it. So again, I'll show you the picture. And also, in the book, I've shown you which recipes this dressing goes really good with. Because I find, like, and then you have this dressing, and you're like, what do I put it on? Um, everything, like literally everything, but also you, you can do the something different breakfast sandwiches, the paprika chicken sandwiches, and fried cabbage wedges. Yeah, so that's the dressings. There are so many in here. And if you can't do vinegar, if you're sensitive to vinegar, you can use lemon juice. And that's a really good question, and I should have put that in the book, and I didn't. Um, it's always hard to think of all the things when you're making a book, and I definitely tried and I asked you guys a lot of questions, but sometimes I just don't think of it all. Human. <laughs> okay, so that's the dressings. Then we get into breakfast, which is like probably my favorite, and I structured the book a little bit differently than most keto books out there by just focusing on sauces and condiments, breakfasts, lunch, dinners, and snacks, sweet and savory snacks, and then drinks. So it's a little bit easier to meal plan as opposed to focusing on like what I did oh, in this bad boy is that I separated out by like poultry and what else did I do? Um, pork, fish, beef, lamb. It's just not helpful to me. I like more think of like how hungry I am, or am I? What time of day is it? How much time do I have? So lunches are going to be like really, really quick. Same with breakfasts and then dinners will be a little bit lengthier like at the 30 minute mark as opposed to 10 to 15 minutes. So my next favorite, this granola. Feast your eyes on this bad boy. <laughs> I make this all the time. Um, so those flakes in there that you see are unsweetened coconut flakes. I purchased mine off of Thrive Market, but you can also get them at Trader Joe's. Uh, if you're Canadian and you have a Bulk Barn nearby, Bulk Barn has great coconut chips. They are unreal. Sometimes they're toasted, sometimes they're not. It doesn't matter. Get them. They're so crunchy and they're so good. I also used erythritol. Now, if you can't use erythritol in recipes, you can literally do anything else. Xylitol, um, the stevia bake mixes, or you can leave it out. You can do stevia drops. I don't care. Um, you need a little bit of water just to make the chocolate sauce work itself out. Cocoa powder, ground cinnamon, sea salt, vanilla extract. That is it. Just like that. Super simple. Now, it's worth mentioning that I didn't have an oven when I was making these recipes. I ended up renting a house for a couple of days to do the oven-based recipes. And I really needed to get this granola done. And I had never done it on the stovetop before. And I was like, how hard can it be? It'll save me so much more time than putting it in the oven. It was awesome. And this whole entire recipe is done in 10 minutes. And you're having breakfast. Like, what granola recipe is done in 10 minutes? I just, it's my favorite. And if you don't like chocolate, and I've done this before, 
you can actually swap out the cacao powder with more cinnamon and some um, collagen peptides. It's good, so you're making like a cinnamon granola. Okay, my next favorite, oh, I've already seen a bunch of people make these biscuits since getting the book last week. These are my prosciutto biscuits. Oh, I no words, no words. I really, I like the simplicity of waking up and having like a baked good. And when I say wake up, I don't mean immediately. It's very rare that I'll like get up and go right to the fridge and eat like I used to when I was um, carbohydrate fueled. But it's really nice to have a batch of these biscuits in the fridge um, and just have them available for when I need them. So I'll explain kind of how I made them and what ingredients. Mayonnaise, yes, don't skip on this. You need mayonnaise in these biscuits, you're welcome. Eggs, coconut flour, baking powder, prosciutto, and onions. That's it. Now I use green onions. You can use chives also. What could you use instead of mayonnaise? Now if you have an egg allergy, you can still use mayo because, let's see, oh, there it is right here. Mayonnaise, egg-free mayonnaise. I made an egg-free mayonnaise. So if you're sensitive to eggs, use this egg-free mayo. Simple as that. Don't skip on the mayo. You definitely want it in these biscuits and you will never make biscuits without mayonnaise again. The flavor is so on point and they're so easy to make. And just like, look at those. I mean, come on. Okay. Um, oh, oh, and another tip that I put in this, in this recipe is that if you can do cheese, that is a great recipe to add cheese to. Specifically, I recommend cheddar cheese. Um, and if you are dairy-free, don't add the cheddar, or you can use a dairy-free cheddar, or you can add nutritional yeast. Either one, delicious, and I explain in the recipe how to do that. Okay, another awesome breakfast. If you're more of a, I like to have a warm breakfast thing. This recipe takes a little bit longer, so it's more like a Sunday morning thing. This would be awesome for Easter, guys. I didn't even think of that. These are called sticky wrapped eggs. You want this, I promise. So good. So it's basically a hard boiled egg wrapped in bacon, cooked, and then there's like a sticky sauce on them. And I serve them on arugula just to make it a complete meal because nothing irks me more uh, than having books where they're just like, here's a bunch of sticky wrapped eggs. I'm like, what do I serve it with? But arugula is really good with this recipe. This would be a perfect Easter Sunday breakfast. It's keto, your kids will have a fun time because there's eggs on a plate. Come on. So really, really simple. Coconut aminos, hot sauce, hard boiled eggs, bacon, arugula. Now the sauce, the hot sauce and the coconut amino mix together and it creates a lot of excess. So then I just sprinkle it all over the arugula and it's like sweet and spicy and there's like egg. And if you wanna go really crazy with it, you could undercook your eggs. So when you break it open, there's like yolk everywhere. I'm gonna show you again. Oh man, it is so hard to pick a favorite recipe from this book. I think because I came at it so, so way differently than planning the recipes for this book. This book, I'd never written a cookbook before. So like I thought people wanted like more fancy things. And so I really pushed myself to create a little bit more fancy meals. But but for this book, you guys told me like, I don't like fancy, I just like good. And so I really just cooked the way that I would at home. Um, people asking what's coconut aminos? It's the equivalent of soy sauce. So if you don't want to use coconut aminos, just use soy sauce, no big deal. And I explained in the head note of almost every recipe that if I'm calling for coconut aminos, like in this recipe, you can just use soy sauce. And there's a recipe section um, just talking about ingredients that I used, starting on page uh, 54, where I talk about how to um, swap out some ingredients that I call for versus ingredients that you have on hand. That way you're never having to go to the store and buy extra stuff because that's a pain in the butt. Okay, breakfast. Okay, now we're switching over to lunch. I like lunch. In fact, Kevin's coming home in like 30 minutes and I'm gonna make lunch. I have like 
some raw shrimp. Oh, he hates shrimp, so I'm eating that. And I have some grass-fed, uh, grass-finished ground beef, which is on sale at Whole Foods right now, at least in Florida. And I'm sorry, but if you shop in the Davy location, I bought all of it yesterday. <laughs> Okay, lunch. We have a keto lasagna casserole. Okay, so I love lasagna. It is so tasty. Love it. My mom made it a ton when I was a kid. But like, ain't nobody got time for all those layers. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> I have a job. I have a life. So I just combined all of the amazing ingredients in lasagna into a casserole that takes like very limited time and doesn't have layers. A toke. It takes you a total of 10 minutes to make it, and then it needs to bake for 30 minutes. <laughs> All the hearts on that, yes. Um, so it includes avocado oil, coconut oil, or ghee, you choose. Then we have ground beef, fire roasted, crushed tomatoes. You don't have to use fire roasted, but it makes it so much better, so I highly recommend you do. Then we have tomato paste, apple cider vinegar. Again, you can use whatever vinegar or lemon juice that you want. Uh, dried basil, garlic powder, dried oregano leaves, bay leaf, sea salt, onion powder, red pepper flakes, rosemary leaves, thyme leaves. Now, if you don't have all of these crazy herbs, you can like literally just use Italian seasoning and just add up one teaspoon plus one teaspoon plus three quarters of a teaspoon equals, how many did I say? Two, two and three quarters of a teaspoon and just use that in Italian seasoning and you'll be okay. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, and then for the cheese topping, I outlined either you can use cheese if you do cheese, or I'll show you. I gave you a cheese topping recipe you can make yourself. So it's all cheesy and good, but doesn't use dairy. Um, do you use jackfruit in any foods or have any recipes to use it? It's interesting you ask. Kevin, my husband, actually asked me yesterday if we had any jackfruit recipes. I have never tried it. It's in a lot of vegan goodies, and I personally don't really enjoy any of those because they, I don't know, it just, every time I have something vegan, like processed vegan food, I like want more of it and I can't stop eating it. Like I have no, like, I don't know what happens to my body. I just want so much of it. So I try to stay away from that stuff and I've never like bought jackfruit and tried to cook with it. So to answer your question, I do not, I'm sorry. Um, so that's the keto lasagna casserole. It's good. Oh, okay, another lunch recipe. Oh man, this one's so good. And it's so simple. You guys probably already do this. And if you don't, you need to start. Sandwiches. Now, this may look like an everyday sandwich, you know, like a keto sandwich. You got your lettuce, you got your lunch meat of some sort, maybe some avocado, um, maybe some mayonnaise. How to really spice things up with recipes like this is a sauce and it's so simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, usually when I go to the store like Publix or if you're in Canada, like Safeway or Loblaws, I go straight to the fresh herbs section and I see what's on sale. And if there's basil on sale, I know it's gonna be a good day. And that's what I did with this recipe. A really simple way to spice up your meal is to just add basil to your mayonnaise for a sandwich. And that's exactly what I did here. Um, mayonnaise, fresh basil leaves, lemon juice, garlic, salt, and pepper. And now all of a sudden this boring low carb sandwich now tastes completely different with just an adjustment to your mayonnaise or your spread. And that's why I included so many sauces. You could even make this and then dip it into some of the sauce recipes that I have in the book. Um, there was a question from Nancy. What's different on this book than the one you showed a few minutes ago? Okay, so if you're just joining, this is my first book the keto diet, and it has a ton of front material. Like the front material is literally larger than, it's like this much and the recipes are this much. So there's a lot of keto how-to in this book with recipes. And then my second book, the keto diet cookbook, is all about the meals, how to meal prep. There's a meal planning uh, strategy solution in there. So we got like front matter is here. I don't wanna lose my page. Oh, I just did. Yeah. And then um, all the recipes and such are there. Oh, yay. It opened right up to the one I needed. 
So this guy is all about meal plans, meal prep, how to plan your meals. And then I give you the meal planning solution throughout the entire book where each recipe has a classification, small, medium, large, or huge. And each one has these little symbols. They're either orange, turquoise, blue, or like a dark red color. And then you just add things up, make your meal plan. It's super, super simple. I've done videos in the past. If you're totally confused, you can go to ketodietbook.com to look at either of these books and figure out which one is right for you. But I really wrote them so that you'd get this book, learn some stuff, then get this book, learn some new stuff, and then get Keto for Women in June and learn a bunch of new stuff. So a lot of it isn't repeated. None of the recipes are repeated except the egg-free mayo. I did replicate that because I understand that there are so many people with egg sensitivities that just want mayo. And I really wanted to reference it throughout this book. Okay, so that's um, Sammy's with basil mayo. It takes 10 minutes. I mean, that's stretching it. I would say like five. Um, and just a really, really simple strategy of spicing up your life, Spice Girl style, with a little bit of basil or fresh herbs. You could do cilantro, you could do parsley, anything. Add it to your dressing and it totally transforms your lunch. Okay, the last lunch I wanna share with you guys today, um, and then maybe tomorrow we'll do dinners and snacks and drinks. Last one I wanna share with you guys today is the BLT stuffed avocados awesome stuff so easy and i'll explain how i did it first you're going to need rotisserie chicken or just like leftover chicken i always like to make sure that i always have cooked protein in the fridge at all times i repeat cook your protein put it in the fridge because oftentimes meals are really quick and simple to put together as long as you have a protein cooked you can put it in the freezer you can put it in the fridge i don't care but the minute I don't have cooked protein in the fridge or freezer, I'm just gonna like eat a Paleo Valley grass-fed beef stick for lunch or like made, make another co fatty coffee. And these aren't horrible choices, but like long-term it's not great, especially if you're wanting to like diversify your eating style and make sure that you're just eating a bunch of gr good uh, nutrient-dense foods, right? So uh, rotisserie chicken, lettuce leaves, strips of bacon. Again, I like to cook my bacon ahead of time. Uh, tomato, ground black pepper, uh, avocados, sliced in half, remove the pit, and then a salad dressing of your choice. So, of course, I'm pretty sure I used the green speckled dressing on this. Oh, no, I used the herby vinaigrette and marinade. So I give you stuffed avocados. And you can put anything on an avocado, legit. It goes with everything. I've stuffed so many different things in an avocado, and it's always worked out. Yeah, so those are all the strategies and ideas I have for you guys today. The rest of my little tabs are for tomorrow or maybe Saturday. I might be doing a cook along this weekend where I'm gonna cook some of these recipes from the book. Maybe not these recipes, we'll see what Kevin feels like because when I write a cookbook or like when I'm making recipes for you guys for the cookbook or the blog, Kevin only gets to try a recipe once and then he never does it again. So sometimes I'll like give him a book and be like, okay, you choose, I'll make it for you. Um, so I'll let him choose this weekend. He's been working so hard and he loved the recipes from this book. So I'm gonna let him choose. He'll probably choose all desserts. We'll probably make a dessert. Um, thank you so much for the sacrifices you make to bring us awesome tools. You're welcome. Yeah, lots of sacrifices, but a lot of rewards. I really do enjoy doing this and it's been really hard without a lot of internet and sailing about but I think it's really important that we understand, and you guys too, there's so much more to life than keto. And keto is such a beautiful tool that's given me the life that I have, and I'm so, so, so thankful for it. And I'm so incredibly thankful for each and every one of you for showing up. Like showing up is such a big deal for me and for all of us, for showing up, showing your support, having dedication to your body and your life. That's so inspiring to me and will forever be inspiring. So if you want to learn more about my cookbook, you can go to ketodietbook.com. If you already have a copy of this book, yeah, start cooking, take pictures. I want to see all of them. Use the hashtag the keto diet so I can take a look. And every time you use, you're actually entered to win a bunch of goodies every time you use the keto diet hashtag. And if you already have that copy, please, please take a moment, go to ketodietbook.com review 
and review your copy. It helps so much, not only so that other people can find my work, um, so that I can keep doing this work, and also so that I know what you like, don't like, so that when I make my next book, I give you what you need, right? So please go to ketodietbook.com slash review, review your copy, and I will be back in a couple of days, maybe even tomorrow, to share with you my dinners and um, my sweet treats, my savory treats, and my favorite um, beverages from the book and why I chose the ingredients I did. Okay, I will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye, guys.